by the carpenter of Galilee with painter's faith the titles meant to me home where there is no light home where the sun is the
See? 
the other person you are free from every yoke from every bondage from every oppression from every affliction from every torment from every cause you are free now say to yourself I am free by the power of the Lord in the name of the Lord for the glory of the Lord I am free let's rise, let's rise upon our feet as we Pray together to the Lord. Just commit yourself to the hands of the Lord. Begin to declare your freedom and liberty to live the life that pleases God. A life that prepares you for heaven and prepare heaven for you. Tell the Lord, by the grace of God, I am free. I am free. Tell the Lord I am free. 
I am free, child of the Lord, I am free to live the God kind of life. To live the God honoring life. To live the life of faith, I am free. To possess my possession, I am free. To amount to something in life, I am free. To be a model of godliness and righteousness, I am free. To be a blessing to my generation, I am free. From every limitation, I am free. From the spirit of fear, I am free. We're beginning with prayer this morning. I am free from every oppression. I am free from failure. I am free from sorrow. I am free from sadness. I am free from poverty. I am free from penury. I am free from limitation. I am free from backwardness. I am meant for victory. I was created to succeed. I was made to rule and to reign. I claim my freedom. I claim my liberty. No more gloom. No more sorrow. No more sadness in my life. I am free from the merry clay. I am free from the valley of despondency. I release myself. From any and every attack of the enemy. From every hold of darkness upon my life. I release myself. To serve the Lord. In truth and in spirit. I release myself. To enjoy this life. This one and only life that I have. I release myself. To fulfill the purpose for which I am created. I release myself. To the will of God. I release myself. To serve the purpose of God in my life and generation. I release myself into peace, joy, and happiness. I release myself in the name of the Lord. I release myself by the power of the Lord. I release myself from any cause and every cause in my life. I exempt myself from any and every cause in any way or form. Generational cause is not my portion. I declare today, in the name of the Lord Jesus, I line up with generational blessing. I line up with generational favor. I line up with generational mercy. I line up. With them that, that are blessings to their generation. Align up to them that live with testimony. Align up to the, with the heroes of faith. Align up in the name of the Lord. With them that makes a difference in their generation.
my life will not be a waste. Huh. My life will not end in shame. I receive the grace to be blessed. I receive the grace to be blessed. I receive the grace to be blessed. I declare today in the name of the Lord. My all prices shall be blessed. My down sitting shall be blessed. My outgoing shall be blessed. My incoming in shall be blessed. My home and family shall be blessed. My food and drink shall be blessed. My spouse and children shall be blessed. Oh, I declare anything I lay my hands upon to do shall be blessed. Anyone I contact shall be blessed. Anywhere I go shall be blessed. I declare today, in the name of the Lord, I am an embodiment of blessing. I am an embodiment of blessing. I am an embodiment of blessing. In Jesus' name we pray. Father, we are grateful unto you today. For you have brought us here to bless us. And by faith, we receive the blessing. Anything contradictory to your blessing, we cancel them. Everything contradictory to your purpose, we destroy them. Visit us. Jesus' name we pray. Amen. 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 Thank you so much. You may have your seat. We're here today to consider something that many a times we don't talk about, especially on Sundays. You know, we talk about preparation for heaven. We talk about getting to heaven. We talk about rapture. We talk about everything. But there are some things happening in the lives of some people that actually will not allow them to be better prepared for heaven. Every impediment on your way to heaven, the Lord will destroy. Amen. I'm going to be talking today on something that will get your attention. Something that will bless you. I think I need that. Listen, it's not just enough for you to be saved from sin. If you truly got saved from sin, you also ought to be delivered from the powers of sin, from the powers of darkness, from the powers of the enemy. You know, we're talking about salvation. If you truly are saved and born again, why are you still under oppression? Why are you still under affliction? Why are you still having all the troubles you're having? Please understand. The world itself is full of trouble. And by virtue of us living in the world, we are warriors in the world. And in the better, amen. amen. But the good news is, greater is he that is in us than he that is in the world. And because you overcame, we will overcome. Amen. When I was created, when you were created, we were created to rule and to reign. Am I talking to somebody? How come? Situations and circumstances are ruling and ruling over us. Enough is enough. I can hear somebody. Enough is enough. 
I am taking my place in history. I said I'm taking my place in history. I'm taking my place by the power of the law. Nobody will take my place. Luke chapter 1 verse 71. Luke chapter 1. That we should be saved. From who? From our enemies. If you say you don't have an enemy, you are fooling yourself, you are deceiving yourself. Then you don't know the activities of the devil. And from the hand of all that hate us. Whether you like it or not, you have enemies. There are people that are your enemies just because you are living. There are people that are your enemies because of where you came from. There are those that will choose to be your enemy because of the way God is blessing you. Because of your position. Because of your promotion. There are those that will be your enemy because of your money, because of your house. Because of your children. There are those that will be your enemy just because you are in this country. But listen to this. The word of the Lord says that we should be saved from our enemies. And from the hand of how many? All that hate us. Listen to this. All that hates you are laboring in vain. Why are we saved from them? To perform the mercy promised to our fathers. Listen. Promise to who? The promise originally was to our fathers. And that's why I was talking about generational blessing. I'm a partaker. And to remember his holy covenant. The oath which he swore to our father Abraham. That we, that he would grant unto us. That we being delivered, somebody say delivered, delivered, out of the hand of who? Our enemies might serve him without fear, how? In holiness and righteousness before him for how long? All the days of our life. You will serve the Lord till you die. You will not go back. You will not backslide. In the name of Jesus. Like I said earlier on, there are things that are happening in your life that if, you, if he is not taken, if an action is not taken, are going to hinder your heaven. Hinder your progress. Hinder your peace. Hinder your joy. Hinder your place in life. And that's why I'm talking on freedom from hidden causes. Freedom from hidden causes. I look at the book of Joshua, chapter 9, verse 23. Now therefore ye are caused, and there shall none of you be freed from being bond men, and hears of wood, and drawers of water for the house of my God. Listen to this. It says, none of you shall be free from being bound men. Look up here. Lift up your right hand. I say, in the name of Jesus, I release myself. I release my children and my generations to come from every cause of servitude. From every cause of slavery. From every cause of bondmen. In the name of Jesus. I release myself. Into freedom. Into liberty. Into progress. Into elevation. Into promotion. I release my family. I release my children. To high places. In the name of Jesus. 
The Gibeonites were caused. It looked like a joke. But the cause remained in their life. Even for generations to come. And this is a cause pronounced by man. But listen to this. It doesn't matter any man or woman or anyone that has pronounced a curse upon your life. It shall not stand. Amen. Why were they cursed? Why were the Gibeonites cursed? Why were the Gibeonites to live like slaves as slaves all the rest of the days of their life? And listen to this. It's not just the set of people that were there alone for as long as you came from that family, from that line, from that tribe, from that community, from that town, from that city, from that state. You are cursed. It doesn't matter whether you were born at that time when the curse was pronounced or you were not born. The curse stands. But I have a good news for you. There is one that can break us. A better news. There is one that has broken the curses already. His name is Jesus. His name is Jesus. The Gibeonites lied to Joshua and the elders of Israel. And eventually, their lies were discovered. And Joshua said, we made a covenant with you already. We're not going back on our covenant. However, there is a cause. Some believers are going through some things they knew nothing about. But just because we were born by this man, by this woman, from this family, from this community, you're going through that thing. You're going through that thing. But the Lord will make a way for you. What causes cause in the life of man? Causes of cause. Proverbs chapter 26 verse 2 says, As the bird by wandering, as the swallow by flying, so the cause causeless shall not come. If nothing has happened that, that attracted the cause, that invited the cause, the cause will not be. It's not just going to come upon you. For you to be on the cause, something has happened. Something has happened. You may take this or leave it. I'm here to show you the way out. Not to hold you bound. Years back, a lady came for prayer. Maybe you've heard me say this before. Very nice lady, lovely lady. Based on my knowledge of her, then, and my knowledge of her now. She's a genuine child of God. Amen? But she was going through some trauma in her life. Trauma in her marriage. Problem that she couldn't explain. And so one day she came and said, Pastor, I need help. I've been battling this alone by myself. I'm getting tired. I need God. God will show up for you. Amen. And so we began to pray. And we began to pray. And all of a sudden, she began to manifest. 
That was the first time I knew that it's not enough to be born again. When you got born again, you repented of your sins. You confessed them. And you said, Lord, the lies I told. This I did. That I did. Forgive me. And he forgave you. And you got born again. That does not automatically remove or break causes in your life. You have to take another step with your new position in Christ Jesus now as a child of God. He said, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy. Listen to this. If the power is given you and you now refuse to tread on serpents and scorpions and over all the powers of the enemy, the serpents will be there. The scorpions will be there. The powers of darkness will remain there operating in your life. As many as received him, to them gave he the power to become the sons of God. If the son with the power will refuse to use the power, the power becomes useless. Listen to this. He said, whatsoever you shall bind on earth, help me somebody, and whatsoever you shall lose on earth, shall be loose in heaven. Supposing you refuse to bind. Supposing you refuse to lose. What happened? Your situation remain. I declare in the name of the Lord, my situation will not remain. That's why the Bible says, that we should be saved from our enemies and from the hand of all that hate us to perform, to perform the mercy promised to our Father to the remember uh, and to remember his holy covenant, the oath which he has swore to our father Abraham, that we he would grant unto us that we be delivered. Out of the hand of our enemies might serve him without fear. In holiness. In holiness. And righteousness before him. All the days of our lives. Do you know some people are not able to lead a consistent Christian life because of their financial situation? Because of their matrimonial situation. Because of what is going on around them. As they bought by wandering, as they swallow by flying, so they cause costless shall not come. Causes are the reasons for stagnations in the life of a man. Causes are the reasons for untimely or premature death. Come to think of this. If you happen to come from the family line of Eli, what do you think runs in that family? What do you think runs in that family? Untimely death. Untimely death. And if care is not taken, you may end up saying that is our portion. <laughs> Evil will not be my portion. And so there are people that in their family is premature death. Untimely death. Something will happen that will take their life in that family. And it doesn't matter whether they are Christians or not. Until you do something, I listen to a man. I went for a conference somewhere here in Washington, D.C. And the minister came and he said, their mother had 12 of them. I know I raised up five fingers anyway. So don't think this is 12. Twelve of them. And at a certain age, number one died, number two died, number three died, number four died, number five died, number six died, number seven died. 
and they were all dying young. After the death of the number seven, I think he said it, whether he was number eight or number nine, I don't remember now. He said, then his eyes got opened. And God told him, and he said, he's a minister. And God said, you will keep quiet and remain like this. You are next in line. If you don't do something, what happened to all others is coming to you. It will not come to my doorstep. It was then his eyes opened. Then he realized that he needed to do something. And began to pray. And began to pray. That was the end of untimely death in that family. Amen. Tell somebody to take charge. Amen. Tell somebody to take position. Amen. Tell somebody to take authority. Amen. I know of a woman. She was her member. She's late now. She's gone to glory. At a good old age. She was a little shy of 90 by the time she passed on. She told me this herself. That in her family, what runs in her family is cancer. And she told me how many people have died of, of cancer. But then it suddenly dawned on her. That she's a child of God. She can do something. Tell somebody you can do something. I call her Mama Z. And pay attention here. This one is not from your village in Africa. This is an American now. Are you listening to me? Whether you're American or European, this is the Bible. Amen? It talks about deliverance. To cut the long story short, this lady they didn't tell me she went to any pastor or preacher for deliverance. She knew her place in Christ Jesus. And she took authority. I said she took authority. And that was the end of cancer. Did I tell you this? So tell you I know what I'm talking about. I joined her to her village somewhere in Georgia. To bury one of her cousins that died of cancer. If you don't take it serious and do something about your situation, your situation will do something about you. And so when you see stagnations in your life, untimely or premature death, even barrenness. Even barrenness. Oh, if you were on the prayer line in the month of January when we were praying about supernatural breakthrough, you hear a lot of prayer requests. Different women saying, I have this, number, and these are members of the church now. These are believers in the church. I have this number of children. They are up to 40 something, 30 something. None of them is getting married. And others will say they are married, but none of them is having children. In the name of the Lord, the yokes are broken. You see people in their life, in their line of marriage or family, rather, marriages are always having issue, always breaking down, always breaking down. That one divorce, this one divorce, this one divorce. You think it's ordinary. Something is running. Evil will not run in your life. Amen. Evil will not run in your family. Amen. How about those that their case is always failure upon failure upon failure. They try this failure. Try that failure. Try that failure. There is a cause somewhere that needs to be broken. And please understand. I'm not trying to be like those ministers that will be preaching like this so that you can come to them for prayer, I want to give you the power and the authority that Christ gave us. 
This is something you can do by yourself. Amen? I'm not saying if you need help, don't seek for help. But I am saying that you should build up and develop yourself to such a level that you can say, God is my God. After all, the pastors you are going to, you come to me, I'm going to call the name of the Lord. Am I right? Or you want some holy water? Or some oil? Amen? If you need some oil, don't worry. We'll buy a gallon, we pour it on you. So you can actually swim in the oil. Somebody say amen. amen. You don't need that, any of our doors. The name of the Lord is a strong tower. The righteous run into it and is saved. Because at the mention of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus is Lord. Jesus is Lord. You don't need to run head and scatter. If time permits, I'll give you testimonies of people that held on to God by themselves like Jacob of old did and said, I will not let you go except you bless me. I don't care where you go. I don't care who you go to. If you don't have what it will take for you to be free, you will never be free. So listen to me. The time is running fast. I've not, and I've not even started. Praise the Lord. You're always going through frustration in your life. Check it out. Delays in marriage. Check it out. Check it out. Somebody over here came to me. Here in D.C. I said, Pastor, this is my age. And it's a big number. Nobody is coming for me. But Pastor knows this is a situation in our family. We don't get married. If you are that individual, as the Lord lives, we will celebrate your wedding. By the power of the Lord. Because of him that lifts. The yoke is broken. In the book of Deuteronomy chapter 23. The Moabites were caused by God. Because of wickedness. What causes Causes, causes of causes. If you or your family member, your parents, your grandparents, or whosoever had acted in a wicked way to somebody, and it hurt them so bad, and they pronounce the cause, you better release yourself from that thing. Because it will run from generation to generation. But the Lord will deliver you. Amen. Chapter 23, verses 3 to 5, an Ammonite or Moabite shall not enter into the congregation of the Lord. Even to their tenth generation shall they not enter into the congregation of the Lord. What was the last statement? Forever. Did you hear that? Now you can tell why some people are struggling to come to Christ. They want to, but something is hindering them and holding them back. They are under cause. It shall be broken. Amen. Verse 4 says, Because they met you not with bread and with water in the way, when ye came forth out of Egypt, and because they hired against thee, Balaam, the son of Beor, of Petor, of Mesopotamia, to cause thee. Nevertheless, somebody say, Nevertheless. Somebody say, nevertheless, the Lord thy God will not hearken unto Balaam. I said, the Lord will not hearken unto Balaam. But the Lord thy God turned the curse into a blessing. 
unto thee. Because the Lord thy God loved thee. Somebody's cause is being reversed today. Somebody's yoke is being broken today. You know, sometimes some people, they don't understand, they go defy somebody else's child. And the parent of that child, they place a cause. They place a cause. Have you not heard of people that because they slept with somebody, a cause came upon them and they just began to sleep around with people like dog. Like dog. Sexual immorality brings cross. Run away from it. The Bible refers to people that are into that as foolish. You got into blood covenant or somebody in your family. Maybe not you directly, but blood covenant. Blood covenant. You know what? If I can finish this today, I'll continue with you next week. Because it's like the more I'm talking, the more things are coming. Things are coming. The lady I told you about earlier that's, was a, that is a Christian and just praying things began to happen. When the manifestation was ongoing, I was baffled. Because I've always believed that once you are saved, you can't have any, any of all those things. But I was wrong. And so I confronted the spirit. Now understand, you are not talking to a human being now. And I challenged the spirit and I said, this is a child of God. This is strange. How did you get here? Whether true or false, I don't know, but this is the answer I got. The spirit said 100 years ago, a little child was born in the family. And a local man, Habalis, was invited to come and circumcise. And the man did the circumcision with an evil spirit, thereby making a blood covenant. And since that time, every child born in that family possessed that spirit. Now, this lady is born again. But the problem is still there. By the grace of God, somebody say, by the grace of God, she's free. We prayed for her that very day. The spirit struggled and struggled, but at the end of it, Christ prevailed. The yokes were broken. The bounds are loosed in the name of Jesus. Amen? Blood covenant. Blood covenant. There are people oh my goodness, that have been sold to the devil. You know, right now, like I said, more things are just coming. I have a lot here, but more are just coming as I'm talking. Next week, somebody say next week. I'll check my calendar before I make too much promise. I will let you listen to Pastor Kumoyo on courses. From parents now to children. Some children are caused by their parents. It was during question and answer time that one young person said, myself and my roommate were arguing about cause or no cause. And my mate was saying, if there is a cause, you need to pray and break it. And I said, no one shall born again. You are born again, you are free. Pastor Kumi said, shut up. You don't know what you are talking about. Open it. Well, he didn't say shut up. That's just my expression of what it was. He now said, when you do some things that breaks the heart of your parents and they make a pronouncement, that means that. 
That thing starts. When your parents gave back to you and they took you to one idol or the other to dedicate you, yes, you may say you are born again, that thing stands. That you are born again does not take those things away. You will hear him yourself. That you need to now, after your salvation, pray them out of your life. Church, don't pray religious prayer. Amen? But the prayer of faith. Prayer of faith. If there is any dedication to idol, that's what God means to that. It brings a cause. As a matter of fact, God said it's going to be from generations. I think the fourth or the tenth generation. <sighs> Help us, Lord. You were young because of one thing or the other. They took you to somebody and then they made incision on your body. Amen. You think it was just an ant that scratched you? Incision. Don't you understand that they put some things together and put into your system? That thing that went into your body entered into your blood. You see any incision in your body, on your body, around your body, whether your forehead? Some people it is right here. Some people it is right here. Some people it is at your, on your back. Wherever it is. Time to break the yoke. Time to break the cause. And you will be free. In the name of Jesus. Amen. Sin brings cause. Who was the first person to pronounce a cause upon anyone? God himself. In the Garden of Eden. He placed the curse on, on Adam. He placed the curse on Eve. He placed the curse upon the ground. Genesis chapter 3. So brother, he said I've been laboring and laboring. I don't know when this is all, all going to be over. If you know what to do, it will soon be over. I said it will soon be over. Genesis chapter 3, verse 14. If you will do your part, God will do his part. Because he made the provision as well. Verse 14, and the Lord God said unto the serpent, because thou hast done this, thou art cursed above all cattle and above every beast of the field upon thy belly shall thou go. And thus shalt thou eat all the days of thy life. Verse 17. Unto the woman he said, I will greatly multiply thy sorrow and thy conception. In sorrow thou shalt bring forth children. And thy desire shall be to thy husband. And he shall rule over you. You know. Thy desire shall be to thy husband. If you see another translation, it says, and you will desire to control your husband. But he will rule over you. You will keep on struggling. You want to rule over him. You want to control him. But it's only a desire. It is written. He will rule over you. But if you are born again, you know how to turn that thing around. That you don't live in conflict all the rest of the days of your life. In your matrimonial home. That you continue to live in peace, in joy, and harmony. Sin brings cause. The enemies brings cause. But this is it. God said to Abraham in Genesis chapter 12 verse 3. It says, in blessing, I will bless you. Somebody means that. I just caught that. In blessing, he will bless me. 
Now I'm talking about myself. Amen. He said, I will make thee a great nation in verse 2. And he said, you'll be a blessing. But verse 3 now says, he said, and we bless them that bless thee and curse them that curse thee. And in thee shall all the families of the earth be blessed. What is that talking about? GB. What's GB? Generational blessing. I just give you an acronym today. Amen. So when the service is over today, you just walk to someone and say, I am GB. That is my new title right now. Who are you? GB. Generational blessing. Amen. Because through me, the families of the earth shall be blessed. And you walk to someone and say, by the grace of God, through me, you'll be blessed. Through me, you'll be blessed. And then you say back to me, through you, I'll be blessed. And then we be all become generational blessing. Pay attention to this. Never you try to put a curse upon a child of God. You know the reason why? If you try it, what's going to happen? Number one, it won't happen to that individual. Number two, it's going to be R. T S another acronym. What does that mean? Return to sender. So be careful of what you are mailing. Tell your neighbor, be careful of what you are mailing. Be careful of what you are sending. Because it may be RTS. And then you say, I, I am praying. I'm doing this and that. No, 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 no. What you are sending to people cannot get to them and it's coming back to you. That's why you as a child of God cannot afford to have an enemy. If you have them, pray for them. Amen. If what they did hurt you so bad, hand them over to God. Don't send any cause for goodness sake. Don't send any cause. Let God take care of them himself. You know the man called Jabesh. He did nothing of himself. Just because of the situation surrounding his back. The mother groaned in the spirit and placed a curse on him. Do you remember there was another child that was born in sorrow like that? And the mother gave him a name that means sorrow, sadness. You remember? Benoni. Benoni. But the father was wise. The father was smart. The father changed it right away to Benjamin. Hallelujah. Go back to your Bible. The father changed the name. If not for the change, that young man would have been killed before the family got to Egypt. Those who sold the brother would have dealt with him severely. Your situation will change. First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 9 and Jabesh called on the God of Israel. This is the latter part of it and I told you you can change your situation. You can change your circumstances. You can change your condition. You don't need to run haters scatter. You can call upon the name of the Lord. If the pastor will call on God. If the priest will call upon God. You can call upon God if he is your God. The Bible says that Jabesh came to understand the situation with his life. He was unhappy with his condition. He was unhappy with his situation. He was unhappy with the, with the slow progress he was making in life. He was happy with stagnation. He was happy with dejection. He was happy with hatred. He was happy with, with all around him. And he said, I can do something about it. And he did. And he did. And the Bible began the record, the history, the testimony of Jabesh with testimony. Listen to this. I don't care what your past must have been. From this time going on, your testimony, your history, we begin with testimony in Jesus' name. 
And Jabesh called on the God of Israel, saying, Oh, that thou wouldest bless me in thee, and enlarge my coast, and that thy hand might be with me, and that thou wouldest keep me from evil. God will keep you from evil. That it may not grieve me. Grieve and sorrow be far from you. And God granted him that which he requested. Pay attention here. Nobody else requested for Jabesh. Jabesh himself requested of the Lord. If only you can pray. If only you can seek the Lord. If only you can wake up in the middle of the night. And get into what I call the battle of the night. I think I should preach a message on what? The battle of the night. You just got it. Write it down. The battle of the night. The battle of the night. The battle of the night. And don't just limit your prayer to when you come to church alone. There is very little we can do in the church, but when you get home by yourself and you get into your closet and please pay attention, you are not praying to entice anybody. You are not praying to, 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 to make anybody feel like, okay, I am praying. No, you are taking authority. You are bombarding heaven. And the Bible says that the prayer you pray in secret, the Lord will answer and give you the answer how? Openly. Openly learn to pray. And some of you, you said you are praying, but you are actually praying yourself into the hands of the witches and the wizards. And they are there and you say, oh God, all the witches in this house, all the wizards in this house, kill them. And then they say, okay, we hear you. That is not the way God operates. Please remind me. Now I'm preaching. I'm not writing this down. Somebody give it to me later on. The battle of the night. Amen. The battle of the night. And maybe one night we'll come together. And then we'll do night vigil different from the way we have been doing night vigil. And you wake up at night and you tarry and you pray and you seek the Lord and you battle it out. Trust me. Trust me. If you can do that, miracle is around the corner. Amen. Jabesh prayed. Look at the tenth verse of it. What, what did he say? Are you there? First Chronicles chapter 4 verse 10. I can't hear you. I want us all to read it together. If you are not there, open your Bible there. I mark it in your Bible. Because what Jabesh did, you will do. I said you will do. While you are opening, let me read verse 9 for you. And Jabesh was more honorable than his brethren. And his mother, that's the testimony, called his name Jabesh. Say, because I bear him with sorrow. So, every sorrow following you will depart. In the name of Jesus. Proverbs chapter 3 verse 23 tells us, you read the chronicle on your own later on, since you didn't get it at that time. But mark it in your Bible. That the curse of the Lord is on the house of the wicked. But that God will bless the dwelling of the righteous. Amen. Amen. Malachi chapter 1 verse 14 tells us deceivers are under curse. He says, but cursed be the deceiver, which hath in his flock a male and bow it, and sacrifice unto the Lord a corrupt thing. For I am a king, a great king, saith the Lord of hosts, and my name is dreadful among the heathen. 
the same Malachi chapter 3. You know the verse? Can you tell me the verse? Malachi chapter 3. I thought everybody knows that. Not verse 3. Verse 10. If you are there, let's read together. Bring ye all the tithe into the storehouse, that there may be meat in my house, and prove me now here which says the Lord of hosts. If I will not open you the windows of heaven and pour out you a blessing, that there shall not be room enough to receive it. Why is God saying that? God is saying in the previous verse that there are people that are stealing from him. He called them fraudsters. And he says, will the man rob God in this age? He says, yet ye have robbed me. Pay attention to this. If you're one of those that is not paying your tithe, the way you're supposed to pay it. I know some people will tell you this is in the Old Testament. As for me, I want both the Old and the New Testament blessings. Amen. God said he will open the storehouse. He will open the windows of heaven. If you don't want that, I want that in my life. God, this is God speaking and understand he is the one that changes not. Whatever he said then, he's still saying it today. Pay your tithe. You made $1,000. What's the tithe of $1,000? One tenth is $100. But you come to church. You brought $20. Because you saw everybody pay something so that they will say, okay, he also pays something. You are deceiving yourself. That's what chapter 1 says. A deceiver is on that cross. And then other things are happening in your life and you say, why God? Why God? Please, understand the causes of hidden costs. Indirectly, you are lying like the Gibeonites. You are saying, all I made is just $200. That's why I'm bringing $20. And God said, it's a lie. Shall beware. Yeah. Verse 9 says, Are you doing verse 9? Verse 8 says, You have robbed me. Verse 9 says, What? Ye are caused with your cause, for ye have robbed me, even this whole nation. You have a gift, you can't give it to God. You have a talent, you can't give it to God. You have a treasure, you can't give it to God. The Lord is saying, there is a cost. There is a cost. But the Lord will bless you. Very quickly, we're going to be praying as we look into the kill. The kill for causes. I'm here to let you know that God has a formidable security and protection for his own, for his own children. He has unlimited power to protect you, to deliver you, and to set you free. If only you will call upon him. He will make ways for you in Jesus' name. I said he will make ways for you in Jesus' name. God can protect you. Amen? By resisting the enemy from coming near you. He can protect you by making the as a matter of fact, he said, the angels of the Lord are encamp round about them. About them. He said, no weapon that is formed against you shall prosper. Shall prosper. It is well with you in Jesus' name. Numbers 23, we read chapter, chapter, but let's look at verse 19. 
It says, God is not a man that he should lie. Neither the son of man that he should repent. Hath he said and shall he not do it? Hath he spoken and shall he not make it good? Behold, I have received the commandment to bless. And he had blessed. And I cannot reverse it. The Lord is saying to you, through me today, that you are blessed. The devil cannot reverse it. Verse 21 says, He hath not beheld iniquity in Jacob, neither hath he seen perverseness in Israel. The Lord his God is with him, and he the shout of a king is among them. God brought them out of Egypt. He brought you out of sin and transgression. He had, as it were, the strength of a unicorn. Surely, there is no enchantment against Jacob and in the name of him. Neither is there any divination against Israel. According to this time, it shall be said of Jacob. It shall be said of Israel. It shall be said of you, what God has wrought. The cure. Pay attention here. Lies with you primarily. Because good things happen to Israel, because God said He hath not beheld the iniquity in Jacob. So if there is sin in your life, because we get through. Are you listening to me? He said he had not seen perversion in Israel. And so, because there was no iniquity, there was no perversion, the Bible says, the Lord his God is with him. And if God be for us, who can be against us? Who can be against us? Nobody. Isaiah chapter 61 verse 1 says, the spirit of the Lord God is upon me. Because the Lord has anointed me to preach the good tidings unto the meek. He has sent me to bind up the brokenhearted, to proclaim liberty to the captives and the opening of the prison to them that are bound, to proclaim the acceptable year of the Lord and the day of vengeance of our God, to comfort all that mourn. You will be comforted. To appoint unto them that mourn in Zion, to give unto them beauty for ashes, the oil of joy for mourning, the garment of praise for the spirit of heaviness, that they might be called the trees of righteousness, the planting of the Lord, that he might be glorified. That's talking about somebody here today. You don't have to be under cause. There is freedom for you and for all that you will take advantage of the provision of the deliverance we have in Christ Jesus. It's your choice. You don't have to just say, I'm not under cause. You know the way we become religious? Let me put it. We become sarcastically religious about it. I'm not under cause. I'm not under cause. I pray you are not under cause. But do something about it. Do something about it. Do something about your pain, about your sorrow, about your sadness, about your stagnation, about your delay, about your poverty, about your marriage, about your business, about your finances. Do something about your academics. Do something about your ministry. Don't you see stagnation? Don't you see the hand of the enemy? Aren't you folding up your hands? Aren't you expecting God to move when God is expecting you to move? The Lord will step in. In the name of Jesus. We are going to pray. Because you are entering into your abundance. The enemy does not come but for to steal, to kill, and to destroy. But Christ said, I came that you might have life and that life in abundance. Please understand that as you rise on your feet. Once you pray, you pray in faith. The kind of faith that rests and leans upon the promises of God. Not the kind of faith that is still afraid of the devil. 
not the kind of faith that does not hold on to the word of God, but the faith that leans upon the promises of God. You're going to have a fervent love for God and obedience to his word. It's, not, it's, it's enough of you defending your error and your sin. It's enough of you passing the ball to other people. You're going to follow the law steadfastly. You want to be sure that you repent of every known sin, every known sin. You confess them and ask for forgiveness and for pardon. You also want to be sure that you are prayerful. A man of prayer, a woman of prayer. The prayer has started. Some are still sitting down. Some are still sitting down. The prayer has started. Examine yourself, examine your life. You are born again. You must be free from affliction. You are born again. You must be free from oppression. You must be free from yokes and bonds. Take charge of your life. You see some things happening to your children. You see some things happening in your personal life. You are there, you are rising and falling. You don't know the enemy has shot an arrow at you. Search yourself first, examine yourself first, examine your life first. Don't just rush into praying. God bless me. God bless me. It doesn't work that way. God said he has not seen iniquity or perversion in Jacob or Israel. And so his God is with him. Search yourself, search your life. Every form of sin, lying, deception, rebellion, disobedience, pride, stealing, immorality, self will, repent of everything. Even the sin of evil speaking. The sin of witchcraft. You are here today. You know what to do in the middle of the night. You know the kind of dream you have. That's a different level. We'll get there some other day. He delivered us, God delivered us so that we can serve him in holiness and righteousness. In holiness and righteousness all the days of our life. Our body will be the temple of the Lord. No sin, iniquity, or transgression will be allowed in. The ones you know you did in the past, repent of them, confess them to the Lord. Ask for forgiveness and for pardon right now. It shall come to pass that whosoever shall call upon the name of the Lord shall be saved. Shall be saved. 
shall be saved. Tell the Lord to search you. Search me, O Lord, and know my heart today. Try me, O God, and know my thoughts, I pray. Tell him to search you. Maybe you are still a child, you are still a student, but you see some things in the life of your parents. You can pray about it. Your parent will see some things in the life of your children. You can take it to the Lord in prayer. There is a cause running somewhere. Repent of your sin, first of all. Repent of this. Nehemiah repented of his sin, the sin of his parents, grandparents, and ancestors. You can repent for your children. You can repent for your parents. You can stand in the gap. Be an intercessor today. Intercede for a change. Intercede for turning point. Intercede for turn around. Intercede in righteousness. Intercede in holiness. Intercede in purity. Intercede. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. Will you please open your eyes? You can tell from the beginning that today's service is not the usual way. The way we started with prayer. Open your eyes. Either 2003 or 2004. You must have heard me tell this story, but I'm telling you another part of it. That somebody will live together, a family member passed on. And I came from church and I got into the house. And I prayed. And she came back to life. Amen. This is where I'm going. After she came back to life, then fear came into me. Thank God the fear did not come. Courage came. Confidence came. The power to pray came. When I walked into that situation. And God took the glory. But after she came back, fear came into me. I'm going somewhere. And then I told a brother friend. My first friend in this church. And I said, please come. Sleep with us overnight. I didn't tell him I was afraid. I just told him to come sleep with us. I didn't know that his life was not right with God. He came, he slept with us. In the middle of the night, a personality came because they saw their mark on him. He told me when the day broke, and this is the question, what authority do you have to be here? We are going to pray today. Every mark of the enemy in my life. Every connecting power of the forces of darkness in my life. Today I remove by the blood of Jesus. Begin to pray. I erase them out by the power of the Lord. Every hold of the enemy upon my life. Every hold of the devil upon my life. As I speak with you, the brother in question has died. He didn't do something about it on time. 
I told him. I warned him. Fix your life with God. The soul that sinneth it shall die. Religion is not enough. The name of the church is not enough. Watch me, O Lamb of God, and watch me clean. Every mark of the enemy in my life, every mark of sin, every trace of sin, O oh Lord, blot them out. David said, blot out my iniquity. Tell the Lord, replace every evil mark with the seal of God. The seal of God. The seal of God. That when the enemy sees you, they cannot come near. They, come on, they cannot get near. They cannot touch you. The seal of God. The seal of God. The seal of God upon my life. But understand, you must be free from every secret sin. From every open sin. From every stubborn sin. In Jesus name we pray. Now you are going to pray. Any sin in my family line. That has brought cause upon my family. That I belong to. Today I stand in the gap. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. I break the power of that sin. I break the hold of that sin. I break the effect of that sin. I destroy them now in the name of Jesus. If you know some things that are running, you can mention them by name. You can mention them by name. You can mention them by name. The lion of the tribe of Judah will deliver you. Anything in your family line working against you, working against me, Anything in my family line. Any sacrifice they have made to any God at any time, in any way, for any reason, any ritual, any covenant that have been made before me during my time, at any time, oh Lord, I break them. Begin to break them. Begin to break them. Begin to break them. Begin to break them. There is power in the blood of Jesus. There is power in the name of Jesus. To break every yoke. To break every yoke. Behold I give unto you power. To tread upon serpents and scorpions. And over every part of the enemy. And nothing shall by enemies hurt you. Break every yoke. Every covenant. Hidden covenant. Unknown covenant. In my life, in my family, in my paternal line, my maternal line, today I break them, today I cancel them, today I destroy them. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Every form of cause, known or unknown, from any generation back to the present, in my life, in my lineage, in my family, I break them today. I destroy them. It is written at the mention of the name of Jesus. Every knee shall bow. Every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord. To the glory of God the Father. Any cause. 
every cause I brought upon myself by sin, by drug, by alcohol, by immorality, by lying, by deceit, or in any way, by rebellion. Oh Lord, I repent today and I cancel the power of the cause. I break the power of the cause in the name of Jesus. the blood of Jesus. Call upon the name of the Lord. When we pray, that is what we do. The only thing is we stand in righteousness before we can call that name. We stand in holiness and God hears us. He will hear you. Jabez called upon the Lord. God answered him. He will answer your prayer. He will answer your prayer. He will answer your prayer in the name of Jesus. Every arrow of the enemy shot at me. Holy Ghost intercepted him. Holy Ghost intercepted him. Holy Ghost intercepted him. Destroy the power of the enemy. Destroy the power of darkness. Destroy the manipulations of the wicked. Destroy every opposing forces and powers. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. Yes, any handwriting of ordinances, every handwriting of ordinances, we war not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against power, against rulers of darkness and spiritual wickedness in high places. Today, every power of darkness in my life, in my family, I destroy them. In my family, I destroy them. In my spouse, I destroy them. In my children, I destroy them. In our church, I destroy them. Pray. Declare today, everything the enemy has done, I reverse them. I undo them. In the name of Jesus, anything the enemy has done, I reverse them right now. In the name of the Lord. I refuse barrenness. I renounce barrenness. I reject barrenness. Biological barrenness. Financial barrenness. Spiritual barrenness. Matrimonial barrenness. Educational barrenness. Every form of barrenness. I destroy them in the name of Jesus. I release myself from stagnation. I release myself from obscurity. In the name of Jesus Christ of Nazareth. You know your situation, I know my situation. Present your own case. Jabesh was specific on what he wanted God to do. You want breakthrough in the area of children? Ask the Lord specifically. You want breakthrough in the area of marriage? Ask the Lord specifically. Peace 
peace in my marriage. Joy in my marriage. Unity in my marriage. Oneness in my marriage. Grant unto me, O God, in the name of the Lord, salvation of my children, deliverance of my children, financial breakthrough, spiritual breakthrough, ministerial breakthrough, grant unto me, O Lord, prospect and promotion, grant unto me, O Lord, I will not be a slave for life. I will not be a slave for life. When you are a slave, you can't serve God when you want to serve God. You can't pray when you want to pray. You are the mercy of the master. Oh Lord, every slave with chains, deliver them today. Now pray every object of the enemy in my body. Every object of the devil in my body. In my family. I cast them out. I cast them out. I cast them out in the name of Jesus. In Jesus' name we pray. Precious Father, we are grateful for today. Lord, we are human. We are limited to what our eyes can see. We are limited to what our ears can hear. But you are the unlimited God who knows all things. Lord, you know the struggles of your people. The source of which most of us may not know. The reason of which most of us may not know. But you know all things. You can do all things. And not until we have come. Our fathers called upon thee. Abraham called. Isaac called. Jacob called. Jabesh called. Joseph called. You answered them. Father, hear us now. Hear us now. Hear us now. Every connection with the power of darkness by virtue of sin iniquity and transgression. Father, today we disconnect in Jesus' name. Spirit of rising and falling spiritually. Epileptic spiritual life and living. We come against you. We cancel your power now in Jesus' name. Spirit of manipulation. Release a little bit. Tighten a little bit. Momentary release. Perpetual bondage. We come in the name of the Lord. Against your grip on our lives. Against your hold on our lives. We destroy you now in Jesus name. Didn't the Bible say. If the sun shall make you free, you shall be free indeed. I pray for every brother. I pray for every sister. I pray for every child. I pray for every youth. 
I pray for every student. Deliver them from the power of sin in Jesus' name. Many of them are not happy with what is going on. But they neither have the power on their own to be free. But Lord, you said I am the Lord. That is my name. My glory I will share with no one. Lord, beyond the imagination of any man, let there be complete and total freedom from sin, iniquity, and transgression in the lives of your people in Jesus' name. You say you found no iniquity in Jacob. Neither is there any perversion in Israel. Hence, you were with them. Lord, even if there were to be anything before, as your people have repented today, renounced them today, accepted into their lives as their Lord and Savior, their Father, I command, be their God in Jesus' name. Be with them in Jesus' name. Thank you, Father. Now, Lord, according to your word, I told your people that if they can connect with you, yoke shall be broken. Bound shall be loosed. They don't have to be another slave to any pastor or prophet anywhere. When your word tells us that at the mention, mention, mentioning of the name of Jesus, every knee shall bow. When your word tells us that whatsoever we bind on earth shall be bound in heaven. And whatever we lose on earth shall be lost in heaven. When your word tells us, Behold, I give unto you power to tread upon serpents and scorpions and over every power of the enemy and nothing shall by any means hurt you. And your word tells us that this sign shall follow them that believe. You said, In my name, they will cast out devils. So we came today in the name of the Lord. On the basis of your word. On the basis of your promise. Your word says you honor your word above your name. Oh God. We call in your holy name. Every hold of darkness. Every power of the enemy. Every yoke in every life. Every cause in any life. Today I cancel and destroy them now in Jesus name. Generational cause. Hear the word of the Lord. No matter how far back you may have been coming. And running in the family. Hear me now. We belong to a new family. By the blood of Jesus, we belong to a new family. Any and every other family, we cancel that cause now in Jesus' name. Any mark, every mark, even the scientists, they came, they said there is DNA. And with DNA, they can trace your generation back. Many generations back. And now, we come with the eternal DNA of God. I say we come with the eternal DNA of God. For by virtue of our connection with Christ, we are connected with God. And so, Every other earthly DNA will cancel every cause associated with you now in Jesus' name. This is a day of liberation. 
This is a day of deliverance. A day of divine intervention. A day of supernatural breakthrough. A day of progress for your people. Father, I command today. Every sorrow. Every sadness. Every barrenness. Every stagnation. Every sickness. Every infirmity that has followed your people thus far. Enough is enough. Vanish away in Jesus' name. Failure. Vanish away in Jesus' name. Father, whatever it may be that anybody here is going through, Lord, you know beyond what you know. Any cause in any way or form, whether the doors will open, or the doors that others opened. Today, we open a new door. A new door. Door of blessing. Door of success. Door of victory. Door of freedom. Door of fruitfulness. Door of fulfillment. Door of healing. Door of deliverance. Door of promotion. In the name of Jesus. Thank you, Father. Thank you, Father. Glory be to your name. In Jesus' name we pray. Before I let you lose, before I let you go, please pay attention. I told you this is by faith. This is by faith. It's not by works. It's not by feeling. What you now 